We're here at the Cape at 2 minutes and counting. At the final stage of the countdown, they are just finishing up their final guidance check with the launch vehicle. This is the first launch for the new Saturn IX rocket powered by an F-1 rocket engine in its first stage and J-2 in its second stage. It is carrying the Dion-1 interplanetary probe, which has uh, numerous scientific instruments that will help us to better understand the planets in our solar system. The Saturn IX is expected to be able to carry 20 tons to low Earth orbit, however this is a light payload for it. And it already has an extensive launch manifest waiting for it, including two station modules for Titan Station, and the Calliope capsule that will carry crew to the station. The vehicle has now gone to internal power, all systems still looking good as we are T minus 60 seconds and counting. T minus 50 seconds. T minus 40. T minus 30 seconds and counting. All final checks in the countdown still looking good at this time. T minus 20. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Ignition and liftoff. We have liftoff of the Saturn 9 carrying the Dion 1 probe to low Earth orbit. We have liftoff at 5.01 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time and the rocket is climbing very nicely. The Saturn 9 rocket should provide a much smoother and quicker ride to, to low Earth orbit for any payload. Incidentally, the stated burn time for the second stage in the press kit is inaccurate. It will burn shorter than that because the payload is lighter. So we'll expect a full burn for the first stage, but a shorter burn for the second stage as the rocket now passes 5,500 meters at 278 meters per second. For a full payload, the rocket will take 8 minutes and 30 seconds to reach orbit, much quicker than the 12 minutes for the Saturn 1H. Okay, coming on T plus 1 minute, 35 seconds. We are 28 kilometers in altitude, 889 meters per second in surface velocity and 8.9 kilometers down range. The smoother ride was necessary for the Dion 1 after all with all its scientific instruments. Uh, however it is a light payload for this rocket necessitating a special trajectory. Because the rocket will be higher when the first stage runs out, the payload fairing will separate at the same time as the first stage separates from the rocket. So we'll be seeing that momentarily in about 10 seconds here. As the first stage runs out, we're coming up on T plus 2 minutes and 30 seconds. That's first stage out. First stage separation. payload fairing separation and the second stage is lit. Okay, continuing to have good telemetry here. 
Incidentally, the cost of Dion's satellite is $223 million, and largely that's because of the cost of the ion engine, which develops 2 kilonewtons, rather spectacular thrust for an ion engine, and of course the development of that uh, added to the cost of the probe. Um, Werner von Kerman wanted to convince Jebediah Kerman to supply and produce the ion engine in-house, However, uh, Jeb wouldn't have any of it, thinking that the idea of something with such little thrust was silly, and so they had to outsource development of the ion engine. There is very little chance that the EDB will develop its own ion engines in the future. As we see here, the onboard camera of the Dion 1 providing us images. And in fact, uh, we have confirmed it is Jebediah Kerman in control of the camera. And uh, we'll hope he supplies us with good images on the way up. Not too sure why there are two Telemachus antennas on board the Dion 1. Dion 1, in fact, has, of course, the Reflectron GX128 that allows it to communicate with the Tethys 1, and that at a range of 8 billion kilometers. It also has numerous other antennas, but most importantly, huge solar panel arrays that will extend once it reaches orbit. And those, of course, necessary to power the ion engine. The catch of having an ion engine that produces two kilonewtons of thrust is that you need the electricity to power it. Five minutes into flight, the rocket is now at 282 kilometers in altitude, 3,500 meters per second in ground speed, and 488 kilometers downrange. Far beyond that now, in fact. The main tank of the Dion 1 has four tons of xenon gas that also used for the ion engine. Another contributing factor to the cost of the probe was the radioisotope thermoelectric generators, the RTGs, that provide supplementary power. Those are in short supply these days, so that was a costly addition to the probe. We continue to get views from the onboard camera of the probe as we approach T plus 6 minutes. The rocket is 303 kilometers in altitude, 4,540 meters per second in ground speed, and 767 kilometers downrange. We actually expect the second stage to shut down soon rather than later. And again, that's because it will burn far short of its the normal six minutes burn time. Okay, and second engine is out. We'll wait for report of the current orbit of the Dion 1 probe atop the second stage of the Saturn 9 rocket. But expectation is that it has reached orbit. And the orbit is 317 kilometers by 682 kilometers. There's some word about the possible loss of an AIES antenna on fairing separation, though we can't confirm that. We're getting word that 
the EDB will delay separation of the second stage because there is still substantial fuel and the possibility to relight the J2 rocket and perhaps the second stage can give the probe an additional boost to its interplanetary destination so they will extend the solar panels first and there we have the the arms bringing the solar panels away from the main body of the probe so that they can be deployed very good and hopefully Jeb can give us good views of that If it's decided that it's too risky to relight the second stage, they'll of course simply uh, make the separation, perhaps uh, retracting the solar panels before doing so. And after giving the separation signal, they'll use the ion engine of the probe itself to boost its orbit. The arms seem to be properly extended, and now solar panel deployment. Just waiting for that, and then uh, following that, we'll see the first use of the scientific instruments aboard the probe. As it will spend some time in orbit around Earth as they check out the calibration of those instruments and ensure that they're all right, and also gathering important information about the status of Earth's own neighborhood. Okay, solar panel deployment. Looks like solar panel deployment is good. Very nice. Waiting for word on the scientific instruments, and in fact, there you see the dual technique magnetometer deployed. And we are getting our first readings. The gamma ray spectrometer reads uranium content in that area in low Earth orbit is 3.1 to 3.2 parts per million. Thorium abundance is 7.6 to 8.4 parts per million. The magnetometer is reading an antimatter flux of 1.2 times 10 to the negative 8. And the magnitude of the magnetic field at that location is 3.38 times 10 to the negative fifth Tesla. The gravioli reads 8.75 meters per second squared and the temperature is an icy, uh, even sub-icy, negative 202.15 degrees Celsius. And so it looks like the the Saturn 9's efforts to bring the Dion 1 probe into low Earth orbit are successful and so the EDB does not have to worry about the $223 million cost of this probe and can move on to bigger and better things with the station launches that will begin next week on Tuesday. So thank you for watching and with that the EDB will be signing off.